So there you are, making a simple change to a model. You change one curve in a sketch and all of a sudden everything begins to fall apart. Entropy and chaos rule the screen and now you're trying to correct a whole bunch of issues when all you really wanted to do is move one simple little thing. What I'm going to talk about is design intent. Design intent is relevant in many ways to what you're designing on screen. Not just the CAD model and how it updates, but also what happens to the data once it's being manufactured and then assembled. So there's a lot more to design intent than just don't pick an edge. Okay, there's a lot more to design intent than always use a reference of some sort, right? There's more to it than just that. I know we like to simplify things because it just works that well in our brains because we are all geniuses in our own brains, but there is a lot more to good solid design and we need to explore that because what I have seen as of late has been kind of nightmarish. Anyway, before I get into it, if you would please subscribe to the channel and for the experienced designers that have something to add, because I know I'm going to miss a whole bunch of things, please feel free to leave a comment. I am going to start out nice and slow and build up with this series over time. So this is something that is going to occur for quite a while. And I think it's important because of the things that I'm personally seeing out in the real world. Also, these are a lot of questions that I've gotten over time from college students and people new into the engineering and design field. So this is the kind of thing that really makes a difference, not just how do you use a CAD system? So let's get into it. Now, first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to design intent is the design intent of the CAD model itself, how you use the CAD tool. And the next several videos are going to be about just that, how you use the CAD tool. And this is hearkening to something that just happened very recently to a good friend of mine. And I was on the phone with for a little while because he had a block. Now I'm overly simplifying it because I can't show you what the part actually was, but I'm going to overly simplify. So we had a block. And what ended up happening is somebody decided that they're going to put in a hole. When they put in that hole, they went ahead and decided they were going to use a custom hole size. And it's going to sit on this top face. Now notice when I pick that, this is in an X, but I know Katia operates the same way. So it's very important that when you go in and pick that hole and you pick that top face, notice what happens in that upper left corner. I am telling the model, whatever it is I'm designing, that is the origin for the thing that I'm going to place in this, in this case, it's that hole. And that origin, this right up here, is going to be where this thing dimensions from. So in this example that I literally just saw, the person completely ignored that and said, all right, well, I'm just going to put it right over here. And then they placed it. And once they placed that hole, right, you get the dimensions, you get the depth, they actually did use a custom hole and I'm just going to leave it on ISO for now because I'll talk about custom holes later on. And it was a blind hole. So it went in so far. They defined the dimensions. They went in there and defined these dimensions. Okay. So, you know, they put in some dimensions. They, they trigged it out, did the math, whatever it is they were doing. And I think some of you, whoops, see how easy that is to do know where I'm going with this for the more experienced people. So we end up with a hole in said position. They say, okay, and here's your hole. Boy, it's got even the start chamfer. It's great. It's right where I need it. They kind of eyeballed it because it's just kind of the, the nature of the design. I mean, it was in the basic position that it needed to be. And then 
they came along and said, oh, wait a minute, this is just a corner break. All I do to the part is break the corners. You just don't have to be such an aggressive size chamfer. So the chamfer is now going to be updated. We do that, and then all of a sudden, let me undo and redo the whole moves. Okay, I know what happened. Somebody new to CAD doesn't know what happened because they're unaware that, okay, I updated it, the whole moved, big whoop. Well, my friend is an experienced user of various CAD systems. He's relatively new to NX and he knew kind of sort of what was going on. It goes a lot deeper than this because there is deleting of edge blends and various other things and things were just attached weirdly and it caused all sorts of problems with the model. So one of the first things that we had to do was go back and figure out how was this thing attached. When this was placed, the intent was that it was measured from this edge and this edge. Well, if those edges move, the hole is going to move. Now, I don't know about you, but measuring something to the edge of a chamfer or an edge of a fillet really isn't good or a blend. The only time I really would want to measure from the tangency off of a blend or something along those lines is if I have to maintain an edge distance for that hole or whatever it is I'm placing away from the edge, then I would have some sort of a reference there to create that specific distance that I need. But machine parts, something like this, this should not be happening. I'm going to go back into my whole function. Now, when I get in there, there is this little sketch tool. Now, when this comes in, you'll note I ended up picking near this corner. It inferred that's where I'm going to measure from. What I tell people to do Chances are you're going to have some sort of X, Y, Z datums on the part. You may know where those are at from before. You start the design or you're going to suss those things out a little bit later. But you're generally going to have a good idea of where things are going to be positioned from. And as we all know, a true position of a hole from your X, Y, Z datums is a really good way to measure where holes go. It makes for very accurate dimensioning from the datums, right? True position. So rather than positioning the hole to something so willy-nilly, position it to the datums that you may need in order to make the part. And of course, place this hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go finish. And I'm gonna play the game that, okay, let me cancel. I'm gonna come up, go to my extrusion. And again, this isn't really the best way to do this. Maybe this is a solid that was imported in and then some work was being done to it. And there was some synchronous modeling with deleting faces and all sorts of other things. Things stack up weird. This is where I'm going with it. So you just wanna put in some stable elements. Stable element number one, stable element number two, Whoops. Pick that face. Stable element number three. Pick this face at the top. And then data axis. I want to go from stable element number one to stable element number two. And then put in a point at that location. So, all right, chamfers go on. Now I have this hole, I have to remedy this hole. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna double click on that hole. I'm gonna go into the sketch and once I'm here, I am going to reattach. Where do I want this to go? Specify plane. I'm okay with having the top face selected for something like this, all right, I'm, I'm not so against it that you don't ever do that. But if you don't want to pick the top face, you can always pick this datum that we put in 
on the top face. Okay. Next is, what's my vector? Okay, for my vector, there's several ways I can define a vector. Like if I look at this, I got through two points, it's X, Y, Z, a reference. So if I pick this plane and double click on that, I'm using that plane, stable element, to determine the horizontal axis. I'm going to go to this point. Okay, where's my point? Well, that's my point right there. I want to go to that point. So I'm going to come in here and say existing point. Select OK. And just like that, I am now attached to those stable elements. So I can come in and now place this where it needs to be placed. Maybe you have to measure it off of those two faces. Sometimes if it's going right in the center, we'll talk about that. You hit finish. And hit OK. The nice thing about this is it does not matter what happens to those chamfers. They can get as big as you want small as you want you can delete them there's no longer an association the intent is no longer attached to those chamfers this is what I mean by design intent now you may have a scenario where the hole needs to sit at the center of the part and what I see a lot of people doing is they'll go into the hole function and I'm not a big fan of it in this in this manner. And then they'll come in here and then they'll determine, you know, they'll draw some lines in, project curves, and then do everything in the sketch. Now, I like the sketch. And I know some of you are irritated at me for liking the new NX Sketcher. And I also like the sketch in Katia V5. And I like the sketch in 3D Experience. It's really good in 3D Experience V5. Really, really good. But back to this. I am not a fan of doing everything in the sketch. I know a lot of CAD systems are that way. They want to do everything in the sketch, but I am not a huge fan of that. Why? Because it's very easy to get lost what the intent is to be in a sketch. And plus, I don't want to have to go into the sketch to do any modifications. So for me, if I wanted to change the position of this hole and I wanted it to let's say fall in the center of the part what I would do in this case oh I have this datum plane over here I can double click on that datum plane and when you know it I can come over to this face and this face one second here oh it's at distance I should go to inferred so it picks the bisector and it goes to the center all right that's beautiful I have this datum plane sitting on top. I have this datum plane sitting on that front face. Oh, let me change that one. Let me change that to the middle. So I think you guys see where I'm going with this now. Okay. There's that. That. Chamfer doesn't get affected. Doesn't matter. Okay, let me change my hole. Now, if I update the hole, it's going to shift everything, right? That hole went bonkers. Why did it go bonkers? Because it's still dimensioning to that point off of those planes. Okay. And the plane normal switched because I modified the planes. I changed the way that they're created. So now the intent is that I want to go in. I can go into that sketch. Actually, there's a couple ways I can do this, even without even going into the sketch. I can come in now. Let me come out. If I deselect that point, just shift key, deselect, now I've gotten rid of that point. There's no sketch there. There's no nothing. But I want to position it here. I can, notice I pick it right out of the tree. Now it's a feature point that I have selected. Now it's going to say, uh, sketch command anywhere. Do you want to save the sketch? Yes or no? No, I don't want to save the embedded sketch. I don't care about it. Don't need it. So it is now tied to the center. So if anything happens to this fella, and let me 
me update. Notice it all goes and it stays in the center. Design intent. It is super important you understand that. And I will be beating this subject to death over the next several months. So for the new people coming in, please pay close attention. This is the kind of stuff that you do not learn in college courses, unless you take mine or some of the ones at Macomb. I know those are good because, you know, it's me. Anyway, <laughs> modesty, right? But um, I'm, I'm dead serious. I've seen this happen time and time again. I made a video about this a little while ago about why most courses are terrible. They do not teach you intent. And that's something that you have to understand to build good models that are robust that edit well again watching the pretty little colors and entropy and edges missing and all sorts of other stuff happen on screen okay maybe it's fun you like a challenge and sometimes it's nice but the truth is when you're under a time crunch you want to make your modifications they need to be predictable again there are different types of design intent there are intents within the model itself how you've designed it i want this at center it's always going to stay there or a certain distance away from my datums it's always going to stay there that is an intent within the design itself there are also other intents that we're going to talk about for manufacturing uh, sake we'll get into like do i want a flat bottom hole do i want a through hole length of threads and that type of thing as well as how far away should holes be away from different things and what clearance holes are that type of stuff as well as draft angles and how important they can be for certain types of manufacturing things like castings and forgings and injection molded parts etc so intent is more than just what you design on screen intent is also designed for manufacturing and design for assembly we can also throw design for performance in there if you want as well although i know a lot of places don't care about performance as much anymore you know that whole planned obsolescence thing which irritates the life out of me i should talk about that one day anyway i hope you learned something again leave a comment if you're an experienced user i always appreciate the inputs it's nice to have other people come in and chime in gives me ideas to talk about if you have questions about this specific subject in this video, please feel free to ask for the new users. And of course, more advanced questions are always welcome. And again, thank you, because I wouldn't be doing this without you.